Hi, welcome to author support and promotion show. Episode one, we are with Otakara Klitke, right? Klitke? Klitke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so I know Otakara for a long time. Welcome uh, to our show. I'm so excited to have you today. Uh, she is fourth time, four time bestseller author on her different books. Uh, she used to be children book author, uh, but uh, lately she has uh, two books in other genre, right? Mm -hmm. But I love, well, first, thank you for having me. Hi. Hi. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. I'm so excited to be here with you. So it's true. We know each other for a while. But yes, I do have, um, and I do hope to still come back to the children's book, actually, like the genre. I'm just kind of hopping in between. Yes. So she's a really great expert. And I always respect her. We, we lo have lots of interaction and we ask a lot of questions from each other while publishing our book. We always support each other. And uh, today, I really wish to know her more <laughs> more than i knew before and i want her to talk about herself uh, for audience uh, what is, what are you doing how did you end up to be an author okay so uh my goodness authors are not used to so much talking about themselves are they <laughs> <laughs> So I ended up, uh, I wanted to believe or not that actually was a job I wanted to have when I was a little kid, when I was like five years old, I wanted to write, I wanted to write and illustrate children's books. I wanted to be a writer and illustrator. Mm -hmm. Later, I, I think I only said like writer. And then kind of life took me a different direction because you kind of grow out of your dreams and everybody tells you, you got to do something else because your dreams are crazy. And uh, so, um, but I did stay a lot around language and using it. But to my 40th birthday, when I was that year turning, I'm gonna turn 40, it was 2016, uh, I saw this ad for like self-publishing course and I thought like, you know what, I'm gonna give myself a 40th birthday present to, to go into a new decade as a new person with something exciting and uh, and uh, so I gave myself a book and and I wrote it and published it and that's how I turned out to be an author and I was lucky enough that the book actually got really successful and it was it actually stayed a bestseller for like two years so it allowed me to learn the whole publishing industry as like to kind of orient myself in it because at the beginning I like had really no clue what I was doing. And uh, the interesting point for your book is that as soon as one of her book get the bestseller tag, other books get the bestseller tag at the same time. I remember last time you published your book, which which uh -huh. one was uh, this? Like I have know? it with the with the but I have uh, well I had like once with my children's book series which in a way if you want to achieve it as an author it means you have to place your books in different categories otherwise you're competing against yourself right in order yes. to be number one I so love it means it. You, have yeah. set, you have to split the categories for your children's book and in that case you can market them in you know both of them and you're no longer your own competition and so i did that with my children's books and so I had both in the same series as a, as a bestsellers. And now it recently was again with uh, my newest book and like one of my children's book, but that just happened out of chance. <laughs> it's just randomly, I guess the children's book sold extra copies and that day and, and hit it together with the other book. But like I said, like it's the, the way to do it, you always have to be in different categories. Mm. Great. Yes, categories is the best, is the most important key in publishing book. If you set your categories properly in the beginning, there is a big chance you can get the bestseller. Other than that, you can't. It's, it's, it's not possible, I'm telling you. 
<laughs> and you are really good with categories. I always see you are up there and top, se- top seller. I love it. So what is the difference? What is the different feeling uh, when you're doing the children's book and you're doing other genre? Um, I was homeschooling, or back again, I'm homeschooling my daughter. So after I published the first book, the Hear Your Body Whisper, this will show you. <laughs> so uh, after I published that one, um, it was doing really great, and I wanted to, and people were really asking for more, but I was like almost shocked by its own success to be honest, because I was getting like these interviews and things were happening and, and people really loved it. I was really getting a lot of emails about it. And so I wanted to do a next one, but I realized I was overwhelmed. And so I wanted to go into something that would be like a different feeling and I wouldn't get to talk about the same subject. So I kind of needed to take a, um, I love the subject and I still absolutely do, but I needed to take a like, break from it and also wanted to be a little more with my daughter whom I was homeschooling and I thought like well what a better way to homeschool and teach a language than actually do this project together and so I taught her how do you you know how do you work and kind of had her on by my side and uh, she was my you know English is my second language and my daughter grew up here so obviously she speaks English better than I do so she would be like my beta reader and she would tell me this is something wrong and she would be the kid wow. that would tell me it was a, a series and chapters books but whether something didn't make sense and so um it was really it was really cool that we did and we did because i wanted to start a series so we did a two books in a row basically like wow. that and after this one then i actually thought i should return back there is something just lovely um, I wish I was my own illustrator today because the illustration is really costly and so it adds yeah. to the whole publishing cost and it takes longer for the book and it's much harder to market children's books. So yeah. that's kind of a work of love. It's not something where you really can sell for profit that easy or maybe I will eventually, but it doesn't seem, it seems easier with the nonfiction but the children's books are kind of the work of love and it's just nothing like when a child Yeah, that just... was my question because I was starting thinking about having a children's book, but then I was thinking, yes, you need to pay a lot for illustration. You are so lucky you have your sister doing it and helping. But well, she's not doing the illustration. No, no. Like, oh, oh. Just like but helps with the action for cover. Cover, uh-huh. But um, yeah, children's book, uh, seems so easy because it's so short and summer is summarized you don't need to write too many words but at the on the other hand you have to pay a lot for uh, yeah illustrations pictures and uh, even the publishing is so expensive because yeah because it has pictures in it and it so the downloads be, are exactly like and it should be a colored picture unless you cannot sell it because right that's yeah. the reason i actually yeah. have a target audience 7 to 12 because i have colored pictures in a ebook version but the paperback version actually has only black and white pictures i had the illustrator make me two versions of each illustration to make specifically for black and white so they are not like just like you know ugly way transferred from color to black and white but he actually knew it and he specifically make it so the black and white would be for black and white book and then the colored ones are for the ebook and that's because when i have book in um when i have my children's book in um kdp and they are being printed on demand um the cost for printing color it's really exactly really high and it's very hard for the author to compete with those bigger publishers that print these children's book in china because you can get a, the entire book printed for 25 cents and shipped over from china as long as you buy it you know i think like 500 copies or something so and so well, some people so it's really hard to compete with that when somebody can get their book for a quarter then where you have to pay track and so they can actually sell at level it would cost you to have this book almost at a level so it's really really expensive to have mm. a print book in color you mm. know you're in order for you to profit you either have to 
charge a lot and then you're risking the audience not buying it because you're charging a lot more than a competition and so I so that's why it. those it's they are chapter books and inside illustrations are only you know color is only the envelope but actually inside illustrations are only in black and white so mm, i got it definitely with especially with for the little kids the children's books are much more work of love i yeah. would say and even then later when you have uh, amazon advertising and you pay f- pay per click um kids they scroll and they they touch on everything and you pay for every oh, day oh my goodness and you spend a i lot never of money. thought about it they go crazy it took me you know what this is an advice that's worth a thousand dollars it took me three years to figure this out oh wow you're right like, i wouldn't know like why like i have two children's book in the series right the first one makes no money a month because that one i have i have to keep advertising and because of so many clicks oh, it does oh, well oh, oh. but it but it clicks like it has a really huge click ratio but those that actually end up buying and kids they don't you know they, they go their parents just let them they don't think about they just keep and they go and go and go and go and that's what kids do and uh, so you don't see the same behavior on pay-per-click in adult books right adults going to click on like what they actually truly like kind of like they're more selective with their time right i love not- it i never thought about it to be honest because i never yeah, so- go to but now no i see my daughter yeah she i'd never give her uh, my cell phone but sometimes she steal it <laughs> and she click 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 <laughs> kids yeah. have, you know kids have the yeah. kin you know they have the little kindle the children's kindle oh i really, see the, the amazon really promotes that they really mm. promote for children to read and have their own uh, you I, know, I bought it for my daughter I for christmas so they have their own ta- kindle tablets the children's ones right so so then this can start happening so basically my first children's book uh, makes enough to pay for the marketing because it costs me just as much so i make nothing on it but thankfully then if the readers really like the book then they go and they buy the second one in a series oh uh, yeah yeah so yeah that's, that's what i'm doing at least. Actually, <laughs> sales with yeah. the second book, right so you kind of have to get and you have to get a but you have to have a good enough book that they will go and buy the other one because if your book is not good enough for them to exactly so you you have to it's i would say like being in a being successful truly successful children's book author um it's very it's very hard to get in there right because of you know because of all the obstacles and you really Mm -hmm. have to put in a lot of it to do it it's good to know (laughs) all right uh, so tell me about your new book uh, you are doing some countdown today. I'm, I'm aware of it. And then I know that uh, you're going to um, have some special discount. Um, until when? Tomorrow? I, well, the whole countdown deal, it starts today. And it has been a whole like, so far disaster because the page keeps rolling so right now unfortunately nobody's able to buy it. but it's total of a seven days countdown deal so three and a half days will be for 99 cents the next three and a half days after the book is going to be for dollar 99 so it's still going to be in a sale and then it's going uh, to 2.99 and from there it probably mm-hmm. will go up only so, so- uh, so okay. i hope I no, hope hopefully I'm, you're gonna be okay you're gonna be okay. I hopefully the amazon i call them they um they said it's a glitch in their site so it's nothing i can unfortunately do about it but unfortunately right now all the, the, the big launch and all the publishing and everything that i had said that's supposed to come today so everybody it's sent to the to the website and basically you cannot buy the book you go mm-hmm. to check out there so let me know whenever uh, this problem resolved then I, by the time uh, tomorrow we're going to go live, hopefully mm-hmm. by that time everything's resolved. I just put notification. So. so tell me about your book. So um, my latest book has been truly work of huge passion and it's about brain. It's about human brain as uh, and human mind and what actually makes us that 
makes us who we are and why we are who we are, why we feel the way we feel in a certain moment. And if you want to feel different, how do you change that? What can you do? And so it teaches you about your neurotransmitters and gives you um, examples and samples and even me right now to get over the, the, the feeling that nobody can go buy my book and I spent all this money and everything is going there. And, but, you know, there will be some solution. There will definitely, you know, my next step is to, to figure out what to do. Amazon understand that it's the flaw on their part. So um, I'll work with them further on what to do about it. And so uh, the book, it's about like understanding, first understanding what you, who you are, what is your brain, how it functions. And uh, from then on, you can basically recreate how you want to feel, who you want to be. And so it does not go from like the point of psychology. You keep, you are like this, this, like this book takes you from the very core point. It takes you from brain. It takes you from, you know, learning what brain stem does learning what you do in a cerebrum you know what you do in a cerebellum what you do in a hypothalamus yeah. what pituitary so gland science can. based i i i read it it's very science very much based. very much it's and very much you have lots of examples you. there it's very easy to understand and you have some free meditation exercise and some practical guide inside which is perfect yeah, yeah. and um what what is the topic again just i I just want you to repeat for my audience what's the brain 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 just brain just brain brain. just brain brain. honestly summarize your brain is your mind but if once you understand your brain you actually understand your mind yeah we are as a society we're going the opposite direction we're going from like some kind of a aloof aloof things like how you do and things and what, what, what is happening and you feeling this way and we're trying to go back. But the moment you understand the brain, you actually understand what is happening, why you feel the way you do and what you can do to feel the way you want to feel, the way you want to be and how you can change. Because a lot of it is just a neurochemical reaction or, you know, um, obviously things like lack of sleep would affect these things. And uh, and so it's it's truly about helping you to understand your brain in order to become the best version you can possibly be. Yeah, I see. Actually, I love one sentence of your book. You say um, your brain is like a cocktail. <laughs> you, um, it's up to you. What do you want to put inside the cocktail with the chemicals? Uh, and you you want to taste it? Is it tastes good or not? That's whatever you put inside that cocktail that's up to you and even if there are some chemicals or negative stuff there again that's up to you how you mix that cocktail and the end result might be a good one (laughs) i love this example so how did you end up writing about the brain Um, i know you have a back story about this um yeah well so first uh the first book hear your body whisper uh like i said when that one was um had its success and i and people wanted to get something deeper i wanted to write a book that would follow up uh hear your body whisper and i thought like the the best would be the brain but at that time i thought of it more from the perspective of like the mind like much more the psychological perspective was not so much about the organ itself which actually this book ended up being but um um just about two weeks after i decided that my mom ended up in a car crash she was walking across the zebra crossing and a car ran into she was walking so it was very hard and it um cracked her skull and damaged her brain and uh, so she ended up in a hospital we didn't know at the beginning she was in the czech republic i was in the united states and this was like right before new year so we didn't know if she's gonna make it i ended up flying over the new year no, new year's eve to new year i was up somewhere over atlantic and flying over there and so um my mom's brain was damaged too much and oh, unfortunately so. it uh, she fortunately she was alive and i had a chance to be with her but uh unfortunately 
she lived only exactly four months, never making it out of the hospital. So she was for four oh, months there. That's but so sad. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, so that really affected the fact that I could not write a book then. So it was just too much, you know, it was just... When, when was this? So this was in 2017. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And so in the 2017, I wanted to write it, but I just could not, you know, like it felt like a cruel joke that I had this one intention with the book. And then all of a sudden I was presented with an actual physical trauma to the brain with my own mom and just seeing that brain go like, and actually I was not forced, but like at that moment, that was the moment when I dove into brain as an organ. And so that experience, and unfortunately, I did lose my mom four months later. So the new book, it's fully dedicated to my mom oh, for that. Nice. So, um, but it's changed that even change what the book is about. It changed me to look at like mine as like mine at something and like understanding that your mind, it's so connected to the organ itself. I love it. That's, that's the part of your book which is unique to other books because whatever i read about the brain um is very similar they are very similar when i read them but this one is totally de dedicated to organs which is which is distinguish your which distinguishes your book from others right yeah thank you thank you for saying that it is it is. You start in a different spectrum. You're not going, you know, you're not going in, you're not staying in a world of ideas and minds and, and feelings. You go and you go actually in that organ because, you know, it, it was hard to realize. And it was my mom, she had a brain surgery in like 1950s. Uh, and so it was even that harder because it, she has been, they never had a case when the person had a brain surgery and then had a brain damage later in life. Uh, she was 76 years old. She was in a hospital on her 77th birthday and passed away. And so, and then passed away. Um, and so, it, that, that was a lot that, that was in question because of the brain, because when she had a surgery. And so, it really made me dive into studying that. And I was privileged enough to... Um, talk to find connections and ask some incredible neuroscientists. I have an interview uh, with um, Arne Dietrich, which is a neuroscientist uh, that specializes on state of flow that's been like, or the peak state, you know, this alternate state of consciousness. And he was the one who actually discovered what happens in your brain. The scientific term for it is a transient hypofrontality. Um, that's if you wanted to know the scientific name for state of flow. And so anyway, so I had a chance to have an interview with him and he is the number one person. He discovered it, right? So uh, he, li he lives in, uh, he's in university in Israel. And so that was really awesome. And so that got in my book. I got to, I have a chapter about psychopaths and I was privileged enough to talk to the neuroscientist um, James Fallon, who is known from his TED Talks and he's a huge personality, right? He's a famous because he's a psychopath himself and he studies psychopath. So you have this dual perspective of on psychopath as objective and also from the perspective of a psychopath. And I it's like that. you learn. And it's so it was awesome. He even edited that chapter for me. So like I he like I was like, I've got to make sure I have the facts right. And so I read lots of things about the brain. And so actually the book it's very joyful. It's not as much as it was a you know heart-wrenching experience. Um, there to start with, the book is a great explanation about lots of things, how they work from the brain, you know, what happens there, what makes that that person to be that and react that way and it really has actionable things you can do to understand what does what for you and what you need to do to create these chemicals without using i don't support any kind of supplements i don't support i'm not trying to upsell any products there in a book so it's basically things you can do yourself uh, 
I guess coffee would be the one thing I would actually mm -hmm. support in a book, but it's not, I don't consider that like supporting really <laughs> some huge company or, you know, trying to sell some supplement. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah so coffee is good, kind of always. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to wrap up um, or talk before that. Do you have any other thing to add to your book or to my audience. I know you have some free stuff, um, which is really good about your exercises or how to train your brain, uh, meditating, and uh, you have it in your website. Uh, I can put the link there for my audience. Is there anything else you're gonna add? Yeah, that's just that. Just go to otakarakletki, that's my name, dot com forward slash free. And there are like a bunch of options for free gift to to get. And so so please go check it out. And sure, uh, yeah. especially these days because she has a special deals and hopefully this problem, the glitch gonna be uh, okay by tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be, it will, yeah, it will, yeah. It will, it will, it will. Don't worry about it. I'm that. gonna make I'm gonna make Amazon like give me some super deal again on the books or something. Yeah. Like give me some promotion. Sure. <laughs> so uh, some It'll wrap work. up today we not only learn about your book which was so unique and very distinctive from other books because you have two big person to interview with from two different perspectives uh, this is only about the organs which interacting with your brain and your behavior and uh, this is also very unique about your book. And what uh, the, the other thing we learned about Otakara was as a children's book, successful children's book, bestseller, and nonfiction book. She talked about the benefits and disadvantages of being a children's book author uh, as the printing is very difficult this is not cheap enough and uh, uh, the click <laughs> a paper click because of kids and i never thought about it and uh, the illustration and all the difficulties that you're going to have in children's book that's why nonfiction is easier for uh, others to do but uh, not for all the authors. Some authors have inspiration and have some passion for doing children's books. So we don't want to uh, discourage them to not going on that road, but they have to be careful uh, when they're going to do it. They have to know the hidden prices and whatever they're going to get from it. And all the advantages from the children's books and how to be bestseller, and uh, another thing that I love uh, was uh, putting your categories in appropriate place. From the beginning, you have to be careful, uh, first of all, which uh, countries you're going to go uh, for your book. She actually usually go with UK and uh, US, right? You're, you're located in US. I am located in the US, yeah, and, and yes. I make sure I actually make sure to pick categories right in the UK, US, Australia, because Australia has been really good to me, uh, and Canada, like the major like, English speaking countries. Yes. That's where you really want to have But you cannot your... actually uh, focus on all of them. It's maybe two, two more major countries. Like for me, you always is US and Canada. I have a lot of connection in Australia because I live there as well. So usually I open the categories there too. But usually for you, it's better you focus on two countries, right? I pers I just personally, I don't really like hugely focus with other things than, exactly. uh, than paper clicks. So when I first set up the book, when the first book launches, I research all of these countries de mm -hmm. in detail. So the very first time I set it up and then I just leave it there. It's true. Uh, or maybe once a year I like remember and go like, oh, okay, I, should, I haven't checked this book out in this country for a long time. But when I first launch, I make sure that, um, you know, I place it right in each of these countries and I make a detailed research in the categories at that moment. And then I just leave it there. And once I have, then I just have like paper click running nonstop on all the books. So I have the Amazon marketing services running nonstop. So um, 
that that it's kind of just like as long as the sales outweigh the the cost of advertising and there is like little profit above the yeah top, that's what I'm saying because you have to pay for advertising so it's better you focus on one or two countries so yeah that's up to you which one you're gonna some people living in uh, India so for them it's right. better to do the but you can right now run AMS only in UK and uh, and America so the truth is probably in that case as far as marketing wise my focus is kind of UK uh, and states um, I had like really like I have like, quite a few people who are supportive of me in Australia so uh, somehow the book tend to do okay in Australia just just by the setup but actually you can only run UK and 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 dot com site that's what I'm saying you only can do your focus on one to yeah. if you're gonna open your categories in many countries then you can't um, advertise too much and then you have to pay a lot it's so dis, uh, dispersed as i'm saying it's not really fun right. on what you do like, all you need is to have a two countries if you get bestseller in two countries then you have international yeah that's it that, that's enough <laughs> so you hit you and, and like yeah, yeah I'm a international best-selling author so yeah so that is true and you're doing by the way you're doing like i'm here at all at the level how you summarizing everything so well like you're doing absolutely incredible job to remember the key points from oh well, thank you because i enjoy it and i i'm reserved for myself as well it's always good to learn from you and because you're expert in, in being bestseller for four times and this one is going to be bestseller too, as I predict. <laughs> you, you have proper categories. The only thing you have no, right now, you have a glitch, which is going to be okay soon. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot of things. I put the, <laughs> this video in Facebook, Instagram, and uh, later on, uh, you're going to be in podcast too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It was absolutely lovely being here and uh, yes. we're wonderful hosts and uh, great friends. So yeah. thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, ring the bell and get the latest videos and interviews.